Yo, we got legendary one one, one half of the artifacts. Elder Sensei, Dirty Jerseys. I'm in the Brick City today. Rap FM. Your boy Tomorrow. We holding it down. Hold on, me not Bogart the L. <laughs> Elder Sensei in the building. So, yo, thank you for having me. Appreciate yeah, it. Thank you for having me again. Yo, this is second time, and I'll I'll I'll, I'll say. Correct way without the WhatsApp. I'll say. Uh, um, I'll tell a secret publicly. The, the last interview we did, shit didn't save. So, <laughs> unfortunately, so. It's 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 out there for for those that saw it, y'all got lucky. But we're gonna do it again. So, yo, before we get started, I like to have people. I like to find out, like the the vibe of where you're from. You know what I'm saying? Because to me, it's important. You're not from New York, people, and and and, and this whole area is usually just considered fucking New York by everybody. If right. you're from around here, you're just from New York. No, so. So I want to know, man, you know, like you rep Jersey hard, you know what I'm saying? And just in terms of what's, what's Jersey? Like, cause I think that's important for people to know, man. It's like, what's like you red man, you know what I'm saying? Um, uh, Lords of the Underground, like what's, what's Jersey? Well, for me, um, Jersey is like the sixth borough. You know what I mean? Like, we, and we not the forgotten one. And I would have to start with a lot of dudes early on, you know, Hassan 7-Eleven. Oh, man, Lakim Shabazz. Lakim don't get enough praise, you know, and I make that important to let people know that every interview I do, you know, when cats ask me about Jersey, because it's always the immediate. Us, Lords, Red, Rodriguez, you know, outs even the outsiders, cats don't give them enough uh, credit either. So, you know, Jersey is a whole <coughs> another movement as far as music. I say, you know, because even like, say, Poor Rats Teachers, my man Wise Intelligent, you know, holding down his group alone right now. You know, that's a lot of people don't even think about that. And, you know, we are a state that is always on the move to let people know that we are from Jersey. You know, where a lot of times when we was all of us starting off, Naughty too, you know, at all of us. It's hard to get, it was hard to get that love in the beginning. We, we was doing shows in New York. We wouldn't tell dudes we was from Jersey until we was, off, you know, getting off the stage. Right. And um, they couldn't believe it half the time. So, you know, we always have to show and prove a little bit more when we out in the world and we scream in Brick City and we screaming from all parts of Jersey where we from. So that's, that's always a first. No you know doubt. I mean? Like, and that's probably to a fault because that kept a lot of Jersey dudes from doing a lot of stuff in the past to what we do now. Right, right. And I can relate to that too. I was we talked about this before. I mean, I'm from Connecticut and it, it's the same thing. Like mm -hmm. you you got to if you in New York, you it's it's like you got to be twice as nice, man, to even like for anybody even to like fucking talk to you about that right. shit, you know what I'm saying? So and I I I feel you on that, you know. So so um let's talk about the, the album You and Sadat X right. XL, you know what I'm saying? Tell us like the con the concepts and thought process behind that because I listened to it uh I listened to it like five times the past couple of days to really you know what I'm saying get a sense sense of what it's about but I want to hear from you you know what what it's about man this album is about me and Sadat knowing each other for mad years mm -hmm. and you know through passing in the streets the clubs and um one night we was at the Smith and Wesson P Rock album release party and we was outside doing an interview and the dude interviewed us and he pretty much asked the same thing you know, he's like, how long y'all know each other, boom, boom, boom. But then after the interview, somebody, you know, our friends was there, and they're like, yo, y'all ever thought about doing an album together? We was like, nah, like, no. And we was like, yeah, we might as well, you know, let's do that. Right, right. Next thing you know, we, we came here, where we at now, Internal Quest spot, Jersey Sound Lab, and um, we did the one, the first song we did was uh, Like It. And when we did that song, it was like, okay, it was, it was more or less, I'm gonna ask right. It was more, it, 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 we lied, we lied. So, you know, it, it was more or less like a test for us because, you know, I know X, but sitting in the room doing a song, I don't know X. You know, so it, it was like easy. We played, the, I played a few beats and then I played that one. And he was like, yeah. And we just started writing. There was no topic involved. We just, was, you know, it just came out naturally. And once we did that one, and then I just, I had beats in the, st in the stock where I was like, you know, just testing them on him to see which ones he liked. 
And X is an easy dude. Like, if he feels, you know, anytime I've worked with him on other projects, on my first album, I played him like two or three beats. He was like, I bet. And the songs came out the way they did. And, and But this was more or less, you know, once we got into doing the songs, we got to know each other more than just being fans of each other's music. Now we listening to him come out of that booth. Out of that door right there is a booth in there. So when we sitting out here and he's, he's uh, he good, he good. We sitting out here listening to his, his voice come out the booth. I'm looking at Quest like, wow. Like, they don't even realize in my mind what's going on because as a fan, X's voice alone, but his style, like he's, he's an MC with the voice and it's different. So that like, it was, it was like the two odds out of the group, out of the groups we're in, and then, but I knew that li lyrically, I didn't know what it would turn into as far as a full project compared to the first song we did. So we would, I could hear us pushing each other, whereas when it started, the chemistry started coming in. But this record is pretty much for dudes like us, you know? It ain't just dudes about rock and low either, it's about dudes from our age group and from our time era of, Understanding right now is not enough for the music that we do, and I won't go too far because it might go into other questions. But you know, we, we got into this record as fans of each other first. How long ago was this though? Like when you when the concept first came about? <sighs> like 2011. Okay. It's 2000. And then when did you guys seriously start? 2011. <laughs> you okay. Know what I mean? After the first, once we agreed to do it, and after the first uh -huh. song, uh, you know, X came here to Jersey, then did all the songs, and sometimes we went to Brooklyn, Dragon's Lair. Um, we, we went to, uh, my man Focus, when he had a studio in Brooklyn, we went there. Um, but we always did the songs together. Right. Always together. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, yeah, you were kind of jumping into the, to a, n n uh, my next question, which is basically you're saying it's for older dudes. I, I got the sense from that. I was like, okay, this is for, this is some 40 plus shit, really, you know? And, and, and at, but I wanted to talk about this. Have you... It's a nice segue. Have you noticed that um, with other with other artists? I've seen a, the Master Ace album. I don't know if you heard it, but there's a lot of albums by some older artists, right. and you hear how everyone is kind of growing up. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And you can hear it in the music. Right. The beats are the beats are different too, to a certain extent. There's more. There's even more soul and this is flavor. And and so, have you seen that with a lot of older artists yeah. now? Like, yeah, because I think I think it's more or less a, a testament to where we come from. You know, like, me and, X, me and X can't make a record together and do anything less than what we did. Only thing we could do is go a whole lot of steps higher, you know, and that was just off the first presentation. Now we know what we're capable of doing together. You can imagine, yeah, we're doing more out, we're gonna do more. Uh, and, and there's so many more people that we've met since doing this record producer-wise that we can work with, and there's always gonna be new, new dudes too. You know, but we made this record in the sense of saying, like, let's make an album and the way we made, you know, I don't like saying it like this, but I, like, like, let's make a record that we would make in the 90s because of how we made records in the 90s. You know, whereas, like, we didn't have the comfortability of being at home where, where we were paying $80 an hour and <laughs> you trying to hustle up and finish up the song. Right. You know, where we doing the process of, you know, picking the beats where compared to if somebody was making the beats in the studio or, you know, something like that. So we wanted to do a record like for today where people didn't know the progression and, and the process of uh, Pete Rock and CL Smooth making the Soul Brother album, a Low End Theory album, Midnight Marauders album, Gangstar albums, where the way it sound and the way it's put together, where if it was skits, you know, Redman, NWA, all these, you know, we wanted to put interludes where you think we gonna rhyme and we don't, and you just like, oh, why don't you rhyme on that? And, you know, skits with a minute long scratch interlude, you know? I noticed that, man, and that's, you know, it's funny that you're talking about that because the, as I'm listening to this album, you know, I listened to it back to back a couple times, 22 tracks, so, and for 2018, that's a long ass yeah, album. Yeah, 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 we can talk you know, about that. You know what I'm saying? That's a long ass <laughs> album. I, I don't know if there was a reason. I mean, did you guys just get going? But so we'll, go, we'll go back to that. So, 22 tracks, and personally, I think it's a dope album. Um, no skips. And to me, that's that's where you start in terms of even talking about good albums. Like, I don't want to hear shit. If you're skipping over tracks, if you skip if you're skipping over tracks, 
don't talk to me, man. So, so as I told you, that, you know what I'm saying? I, I said, yo, it's pretty hard to make an album with 22 tracks to, right. that, that you don't skip. Um, and, but I noticed, like, the back and forth, you guys have t totally different styles, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Totally different. Two distinct voices, actually. You said his voice is yours. I mean, you sound like Tom Brokaw or some shit, you know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? So you got a you know, really distinct, you know, radio, television voice and stuff. So it was like, flow is night and day. Like, so it was, it, it was great to hear that. Um, it's, a, it's a solid album, man. It's a really solid album. And I appreciated the Scratch interlude because to me, that pays homage to the whole umbrella of right. hip hop and it's right. not you know what I'm saying it's like okay and this is when cats used to do that back mm -hmm. in the day they they let the DJ like work man or right. even at a show let the DJ work for a minute mm -hmm. so um I thought that was I thought that was cool how you guys did that and and the skits and it it felt like yeah man like this is an album for for heads you know from back in the day yeah, you know I, what I, I mean I knew certain young cats you know I lo and behold y'all might not know me and X even Artifacts have a young fan base, but y'all might not know it. Cause like, especially when you go to Europe, you know, Europe, European talk, yeah. cats, they come in the clubs at 18, you know, 18, right. some 16, you know, festival wise. But, you know, we go to these shows and, and the average cat is like in their early 20s, you know, and, and today our age. So it's a mixed crowd. Right. So, you know, we know and with this record that we had to talk to them but at the same time, it, it was it's cats out there that know of us through brand newbie music and artifact music, and followed us into the solo. Right. So you know they we I knew, I told X like you know let's you know really make a record for dudes that's expecting us to make a certain kind of record. All the DJs out there who don't get the the homage paid to them, this record was full of DJ action, and we didn't want to forget about them. But it's pretty much 22 songs. We knew that probably a lot of people wouldn't sit and listen to the whole thing straight through, but at least we knew out of 22 songs today you're not getting, and the average, you know, 40 minutes to 50 minutes, 55 minutes, cats are doing. So I'm like, look, this is the first one. You know, we call them this X XL. It can't be large. We can't do four, t 10 to 12 songs. And as much as we've been talking about this record, you know, every song that we recorded went on the record, maybe a seven, one or two, and we leaked one with the uh, the Ninth Wonder uh, track. Okay. Last year. Right. Yeah, it's a dope album, yo. I mean, and 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 I mean, this is um, rap FM. We got Elder Sensei in the building, Jersey. Sure. We in Newark. Yo, the bricks. Bri bricks. Bricks. Right across the street. <laughs> Brick City. So. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a dope album, man. I I think it's really good. I I think pe I think there are gonna be a lot of people that can't appreciate it though, and in, in, in terms of in terms of what it is, you know, because it's and I think that's okay, and now you don't have to, but but um, it's it's interesting. I, I was thinking, man, I was like, oh, this person ain't gonna fuck with it. They just in terms of just going through but my we, head. We, but we knew that too. Yeah, it, man. But it's yeah. like with Ace and Marco Polo. You know what Marco Polo beats are, and if you know Ace as an artist, you heard their work in previous. And joints, you know, it's only gonna sound better. It's only gonna get craftier. The beats are gonna be more solid. Right. You know, and that's what the combination is for. You know, we letting people know that we're making these collaboration records and group records and efforts together to make sure that you know people do get the the good quality music and records they expect. But at the same time, it, it's I, I always say this is like almost like if you know Marvel Comics, the Marvel team up. If you read if you read those books. You would get the odd members out of a crew, you know, catch you wouldn't even expect the team up. Right. And this is the tradition we did with me and X, where we was like, you know, he's from Brand New Me, I'm from Artifacts, we got different powers, but our, if you listen to all our music, it's kind of in the same vein, producer-wise, beat-wise, and we learned, we learned from Brand New Me when we first came out, so it only made sense a little bit, too. No, it was dope. It's a, it's a good album, you know what I'm saying? I think people should definitely pick it up, and, mm -hmm. and it's... Yeah, it's solid, man. Like I said, it's. I think it's hard to make that long of an album. That, still keep that and, and, and keep it solid through, because it's like having stamina. You know, you're like you're running like a 400 meter dash. That's technically a sprint. Mm -hmm. So, but you so you have to sprint it, but still have the stamina right. to finish yeah. at the end. So it's like sometimes albums start out, you fucking rocking out, and then by the end it just peters out. It's like, yeah. you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, you guys held it down. 
Um, as far as you talked about Europe and stuff like that, seems like a lot of people are going to Europe, or seems like, and it also seems like Europe has a '90s feel to it right. in a lot of in a lot of areas. Mm-hmm. Um, do you, do you, have you guys have you noticed that, or or, or is it? That's why we keep going. You guys get a lot of love over there, right? Yeah, man. It's like you know, it's almost like how you watch these documentaries with jazz artists, and I just watched one with Quincy about Quincy Jones and see how his career started in America to feel like he had to go to Europe to be. A lot of people use the word appreciated. That's true, but the reason why we really keep going over there is because they are not spoiled to what we started and kind of like play with over the years where say you have sparks and flashes through the years of the 2000s where you thought hip hop would go back to how the 90s would probably sound. These dudes and these people out there didn't grow up with the luxury of going to New York and just happen to walk by an artist or go to a club and just, you know, every other day, you know, go to a function whether it's somebody DJing or if it's a show. Right. So it's like <clears throat> they have the means to bring us there and bring the show live to them. Right. Whereas to say they, you know, a lot of cats that come to these shows will say the normal things. I never thought I'd see y'all live before. No, but, but I say like, hey, we never thought we'd be around this long right. to be booked to come to see you rock some, you know, where we to, you know, you never saw it live. But, you know, they love the music just as much as we do. Uh, they have all the same radio, everything like that, you know, like we have here, but <clears throat> it's more or less they are holding on to the t- tradition of what, you know, built us up to where we are to a point where they uh, don't understand why it changed for us, you know, and they look at everything about it. They look at the fashion, they look at when they come visit and how it's like, wow, it's not like, you're not going to see graffiti when y'all come over here now. It's right. not going to be like how you think in the movies. Like, it was for us growing up, <laughs> right? you know, to see that. But when you go over there, Germany, Pat France, everywhere is graffiti, everywhere. Right. And even through the late 90s, even till now. But they have places there where it's schools to teach hip-hop. Where you ask J. Rowe from Alcoholics, where he was in Malmo, Sweden, doing that. You know, and... They have classes for b-boyism and lyricism and flow and everything to teach right. what hip hop is supposed to be about for the youth even now. Because the reason why it is like the way it is today is because they this youth wasn't taught like how we was taught. Like how it's almost like where you on the block as a young cat when I was coming up, dudes that were making money didn't want to see you out there making money, especially if they knew you wasn't into it. They run you off the block. That is what didn't happen as we progressed in our careers and seeing that these young cats, and you see it in all the documentary hip hop evolution. I would make my son watch all of this stuff. And I just bugged out. So I go in his room in the morning and he playing how I had some you know, in it, but I love it because he's not playing what they playing now. Yeah. And that means that it's like something that I, you know, he's listening to what I listen to and I'm showing him like, this is what it's about. And you see here, watch this, watch that. That didn't happen for these cats running around the way they're running around now. So they don't know the knowledge of where we come from unless they watch these things on Netflix. Right. They parent thing, you know, they ain't showing them that. So you were almost about to touch on it. Let's, let's go there, man. How is shit different now? You know what I mean? Like you just said you didn't want your, you're happy that your son was listening to some like, you know, real shit other than what's going on now. Right. How is it different? I, I, it's, I asked this question a lot really for the older people that I, older artists that I interview because it's important, it's what's going on and, and it's what's really being talked about on my personal page and just in hip hop, like, you know, so I'm, I'm before I, you know, taint the airwaves like, with the shit, what do, you, what, what do you feel about what's I going on right think, now? I think it's that. <clears throat> These young cats don't think it's laws and rules to hip hop, whether it's, you know, they stealing each other's names and looks to Remixes where it's not a, re- a real remix, change the beat up, change the lyrics up, something to look forward to other than what it was already done that's not happening. You know, and that's the main thing I, I can attribute to that. You know, it's not, they don't understand how we feel when you see Joe Button screaming at a dude. They don't understand how when you hear music and hear us talking the way we talk 
about their clothes and everything, just the tattoos on the face. They don't understand why we're mad at that, you know, or why we feel like, and it's easy for them to say, oh, gee, whatever, how do you get some head? No, it's not about the money part either. We already know what that is, you know, so it's like, that you're going to come down from that. You know, we trying to make y'all understand why it's like that for you now, but you understand you don't get it. Right. So it's like screaming at the wall for older dudes where they don't know how to express themselves. And I think that there's a lot of dudes out there that can talk to that's making music, you know, that that's doing the kind of style of music that we do rather than, you know, be mad at what's already evident and what it is already. We know what it is. So it's just the fact that we got to own up to some of it that we didn't teach these dudes. And we part the blank. I, I've said it before. That's, that's, to me, it's a four part thing. I said the older heads are part of it because we all stuck our heads in the sand and right. act like the ostrich and pretended like it wasn't really happening and, like and, put, and put our head down. And then this is what we get after. And, and, and you know, so by not saying anything, and that's why now, People are like, oh, why are you always still talking about this? Why? Because it's a fucking problem. Right, you know what problem. I mean? Because it's not a, it's not just about old heads being salty. Yo, it's like yeah. you're fucking up the culture. Like you're saying, you're, you know what I mean? There's a whole, there's levels to it. I mean, nobody's just being pissed off just to right. be pissed off. It's like you're, you're saying that the culture doesn't matter. You're saying that certain great MCs no, are no longer relevant. You're saying they're on record as saying that you don't. They don't care if they write their own shit. You're fucking up the rules mm -hmm. and the whole paradigm. There are, there are rules. Dude, right. I was at a, a conference, a panel one time, and this little dude was on the panel. And he straight up said, yo, y'all be putting so much pressure on these little dudes and said, da 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 I'm like, what you mean? He's like, you know, like, like <clears throat> is it like written rules and laws? To I'm, and we all in the room like, yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes, it is. It is, bro. Like, if y'all don't, like, it's all the things you ever heard. Like, if you don't know what's before you, you'll never know what's, you know, you can't pass on anything. So, but these dudes are ignorant to it because they got so much money, man. And it's like, I always said it's like interrogation. If I could take any one of these dudes and sit them in the room, had the light flashing back and forth, had my man sitting here telling them, like, you know you fucked up and all that. Because it's like, we don't have them sitting there, like, just pressing this in their head the right way to say, listen, bro, look, we trying to get you to understand why we're mad. If, if we explain in that way and not see them be us be so frustrated, you know, it's dudes out there we to work with. Right. But they dudes that's unknown just as much as us. Right. But there's a lot of dudes that new cats out there that's doing the type of style that we do. Right. Right. So so yeah, we were talking basically about you know, rules, this, the, rules. the rules, this generational shit. Yeah, you were saying you were on this, you were on a panel. Yeah, my man, my little man just didn't think, he asked us, like, you know, just like, is it rules to this? And, you know, people got to sign up to it or something like that. I'm like, yeah, like, we signed up early, you know, and that's, you know, and, and was taught by the best. And now we have the opportunity still to do that because, you know, like I said, my son is 15 years old, and those are the dudes we need to be talking to. Cause they coming up in the age of Netflix and watching these documentaries and, you know, they learning a lot. I seen a dude on YouTube, a little dude named King Wap. The dude do reactions to like uh, old videos and everything like that. He's like maybe like 18 years old. And you can see his reaction is genuine when you watch it because he, you know, said he didn't have parents that grew up watching all these videos and teaching them everything. So he's teaching himself. And this dude, wow. you go King Wap. G U A P. Okay. This little man, you watch him. He right now, if he didn't know nothing about East Coast hip hop, he's the biggest Big L fan ever right now. And he, he, I think he's from New Orleans, maybe somewhere down south. Okay. So if you get a chance, check that dude out. And when you watch him, it, it, it put a smile on your face because he's saying that I'm educating myself on the '90s hip hop, and he's loving it. He, he talked about all the videos in the '90s, but he's like, yo, it seemed like. Y'all was big on having like barbecues back in the day because all a lot of the videos he see, like whether it's Dr. Dre, oh, or Fred Prince of Bel Air, you know, for, uh, to Jazzy Jeff, and they be like, I see y'all big on grilling. I was like, you know, we had a lot of videos back then. That was what we used to do. And that's a crazy observation right. to make, too, he, to be he, honest he with you. That out on but, that, but, that's, and that's, but that shows he's paying attention. Right. You know what I mean? And that shows that he cares about the details because attention to detail is important because that's hip hop. You know what I mean? So. And a lot of the shit he say about the videos in the whole, he say, it seemed like. A lot of dudes in the 90s were having fun. That's what he getting out of watching these older videos too. Right. All right, so 
we know where it, we know where it's been. Right. We know what it what it's what it is right now and mm -hmm. stuff like that. All right, so a couple things. What can be, what do you think we should be doing to to to? Because I feel like personally, you know, there's there's levels. You can only say so much, mm -hmm. and then at times, I'm gonna keep speaking on it because it's because it's some of this stuff is crazy and it's continuing to increase. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, people are like, why don't you focus on more positive stuff? What's you know? So I think you got to do both though. Right. So I mean, I mean, you do both. Yeah. Uh, I think I think what has to happen though, eventually, is like mm, promoters probably need to start like mixing us mixing it up, where I say like you know. We, of course, we could do shows with Joy Badass because Joy Badass is in the same realm as, as where we come from. We could do shows with a lot of young cats. ASAP Ferg, I see he do. He even for him, I give him not even say credit, but I give him love for just doing a joint with Primo to say, "Look, I'm reaching out to the OG." Right. And the OG, and Primo's like, "Yeah, you know what? Good. That's what's up. And you need to be working with me anyway because right. this is what it is, and I want to get a chance to work with a young dude right. and let their generation see. Right. You know, because like, you know." It can only go but so far, you know. It's always a ceiling. So I would say that, you know, if we can mix in the younger groups with the older groups, so where they see, you know, in the crowd, maybe the crowd can start mixing in together, because then you have a older crowd mixed with a younger crowd. Because that's what they do in Europe. Right. But so then I, my devil's advocate point to that is I, I see that happening a lot on a lot of cases. Mm -hmm. And it's trash, right. depending on who they. Who the, it, can't, it can't be just. I'm saying, like, a lot of oldest artists seem like they just jump, you know, hang right. on to a, a younger artist to have some juice, mm -hmm. and that artist doesn't even seem like it would even fit right. with that with that yeah, art. But it gotta be dudes that fit. It, got, it can't just be random. Yeah, so that's together. an important. I, I mean, I'm glad. I just wanted to bring yeah, that out just so we can clarify. Okay. I mean, like, you know, even like when we go out of town, we do shows on the road. You have open and acts there that are. And as far as like you know, in the range of where we come from, because they know who's coming to the town. Right. So they're not gonna put a trap artist in with us in the town because they know what kind of show right. we're gonna do. So I think that as long as we have that in mind when you're talking about doing shows, where say like Davey's doing the album with Styles P. I heard the album, dope. But that's a good blend where you talking about young dudes that follow Davey's might follow Westside Gun and Conway. And that'll make them see, oh, I never heard this, you know, style P like that. But then they hit them together, and you bring them crowds together. And that's pretty much, I think, what has to happen a little bit more. And, and I see it happening a lot, but like that's a good experience, uh, example right there. Right, right. So, all right, then, where do you think it's going? Where do you think? Cause, well, actually, I'm gonna backtrack before you mm -hmm. answer that question. Is hip hop dead to you? No, no. Why not? Because dudes from my era could eat a little bit more now and the balance could be kind of like, you know, a little bit even when you talk about online and, and having another, there's a whole other world online being an artist today. You know, where it's like for older dudes, they kind of figuring out what to do. Right. Where a lot of dudes still hard headed to a lot of the things they got to do with doing it today because it still goes back to grassroots. Right. But if they understand why they have to do it, why you got to do interviews, why you have to do, you know, visuals, you know, even if it's not gonna cost you thousands of dollars, you still have to do it. Um, you have a chance now to do merch where you didn't do it before. Um, you know, and I'm gonna tell y'all for real, like you have to go to your show with, with merch. And you can't disappoint these people because they know you're coming from far away. You going to Japan, take merch with you, yo. I just had a conversation with with Twin last night. Pete the Twin, he hit me up. Yo, hell, I'm going to Japan. What, they gonna mess with me with the merch? No, you're good. Bring your bag. Because you're gonna need that. And these guys don't want to pay for shipping. So a lot got of the big twins. Right, true. Right. And when you're doing this now today, you have a lot more opportunity, you know, than we had in the past. Even to reach fans, there's no excuse no more. You know, we control everything. So, you know, that's a blessing for a lot of dudes that know what I'm talking about, but you know, it's just what it is. You know, you couldn't control anything in, in the past. If you was on the label, P.O. Box, New York, New York, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's all it was. And you were taking that and you would go to the label, ask for the fan the fan letters and stuff like that, but you barely got them or they wouldn't tell you. So this way today of doing it and having a website and do you can control your own destiny and and make sure that your self is out there, you're selling yourself, 
that's the biggest thing I can say happening today where artists can afford to press their own records, whether if it's 300, 7 inches to 500 to 800, 12 inches or albums, you know, and, and there's a lot of avenues to take that with distribution. So this is the world that you can live in and you can really eat. You can really eat. I'm talking about you can really eat. Rick Warner did it when he, when he, you know, when he started figuring it out too. And he made, he, I remember, I think it was um, um, uh, Cuban Links 2 out. And when they dropped that, he saw, well, I can make this many <laughs> and sell this many and make this much. He, I'm, I'm good. Let's go. So everybody, let's go. That's why you see this resurgence of Wu-Tang right now. That's descending on the youth when you see him on Good Morning America. This is why he's not dead. Because of stuff like that happening. So, you know, I, I suggest everybody fall in line. If you're a smart person, you understand what the internet is for and you'll use it to your best advantage today. That's dope, yo. You just touched on a lot of things that I was going to bring out. So it's perfect. Like, <laughs> just in terms of like, I mean, you gave a lot of good advice. And you talked about the, the, you know, the state of the game. And that's really one of the, like, how it's, how it's changed mm -hmm. in terms of the technology. And I, right. I tell artists I've done videos on, I'm like, yo, if you're an artist, it makes sense to, you got to know how to send files and, and, yeah, and, yeah. and, and deal with some of this <laughs> shit. And you, you, you can't just. Can't be, be computer literate. Can't yeah. be in the dark. No. You can't be you can't be in the dark, and so yeah, you touched you touched on how it's different. So, I mean, it, merch is like super important now. So, what mm -hmm. about even is it worth making albums? And I mean, in terms of physicals and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, because like even when you go when you have a, deal, a label deal, you know, you look at a lot of labels now. Even with the bigger artists, they pressing vinyl. You know, and it might only be a thousand, but they pressing them. You know, because they see that medium is coming back. Right. For the last five years, six years, known fact, the vinyl industry has grown a certain percentage every year. Right now, it was 15 before, and now I would say it's like a good 30, 35% right. of vinyls out there. You got uh, <coughs> pressing companies backed up three to six months for your records to get done. And that's depending on who, you, who you're dealing with. You know, if, if you know, if you're not going to be with a label, you're still you're still able to do it yourself for a certain amount of, you know, what, what you got your money for. And, right. and, you know, even for me and Sadat, right, you, you go to vinyl digital, vinyl-digital.com, they got cassettes, they got vinyl. We don't have CDs, but, you know, that was the, with the, the reason why we made the cassette. It was a choice between that. Cassettes are selling big, too, whether you got a radio no more or not, or your car ain't got no tape cassette no more. If you do, you you chilling right now. Right. All the tape is coming back. Everybody making them. So it's like, you know, and they're affordable. You can make them yourself too. You know, if you're not on the label. So if you don't make this shit, you stupid. You know, because like, you know, you cheating yourself. You know, it don't cost that much to print up a couple of shirts, two or three dozen shirts to take to you what you want to tour. Where when you go to Europe, there'll be a money. You got CDs. You do all of the physical shit because all they're gonna do is take that and put it in their computer anyway and dump it on their phone and whatever like that. So is you be mindful to have it or not. So don't sleep on yourself. Real. Yeah, I tell artists all the time, invest in yourself. Especially now, it's so easy yeah, to do anything yeah. now. Yeah. You can anybody can do. That, and that's why, <coughs> excuse me. That's why you have a lot of trash music getting, you know. A lot of publicity and stuff like that because yeah, anybody can do it. You can get out there. It's like yeah. you know, it's it's you gotta you gotta be able to market yourself as an as an artist, and that's you know, that's definitely what changed. What about shows for you? Is I mean, I guess also our advice for new artists. Mm -hmm. I mean, like practice like, in the mirror. What's that? Practice in the mirror still. Like a lot of shows, you go. To, oh my god, yo, for real, y'all gotta stop with this rocking over y'all vocals at shows too. It's it's. A disease right now for some cats, you know, and they think I don't know if y'all scared to do it, but without the vocals, and you know, but you gotta do it without the vocals. It sounds so much better, and we know that you practicing your song to learn it, like actually learn it, to, so we can see what you're doing. Yeah, that's 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 crazy. And, that's you know, I, I think that you need to get into your show, uh, practice, so you see what you look like in the mirror and when you on stage, and we see what you look like on stage. You might not see that, but we see it. You know, be presentable on stage when you're coming out there. You know, don't walk back and forth. Just be hyped up, you know, do whatever you need to do 
What I didn't do in the past was a lot of crowd response and stuff like that. As I got older, I learned how to do that because you could be boring on stage and not know it. You'd be the nicest dude ever. But if you're not giving that crowd some, you know, aces, I say again, aces is a good, good artist for that. You know, this dude have a solid show straight through. And he's not, you're not just watching him, you're, you're participating in the show. And Give an example of, of that, like in terms of like, like, crowd, I mean, just, I'm so sorry. Even say like when, 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 with the DJ, you mm -hmm. know, when me and Kay had to do a song, I Ain't Trippin', you know, you asking the crowd to follow the DJ, you know what I'm saying? Because I don't want y'all to pay bread to come and you're not having fun. So they said, you know, we give them a certain amount of orders to do, you know, to make the song better for them while they participate. So like with Ace, I, we just went to the show where he told me, let's go back in time. Not average, go back in time and just play records like Marco Doug in the crates where they did something genuine where the crowd felt like, you know, after a while they got into it, they have, you have, it's about having fun. It's about spending your bread and having fun. You're not just going to the show to stand there and look at somebody rock, you know, you're actually in the show too. So, you know, that's what you want people to actually do. All right, yeah, that, make, that makes perfect sense. So, um, one other question I have for you, in terms of, the, again, still in terms of the state of the game today, mm -hmm. do you think, do you think it's ever going, because some people say, or it's, it's, it's going to be a, res, a resurgence. I mean, you look at the, they look at the 2018 year and hip hop in the last couple of years, and we have a lot of good music out. And it's, it's people are saying, well, it's going to be become like the '90s again and stuff like that. I've talked to, you know, you know other artists. Say, you go ahead. I'm, I'm the, I <laughs> talked to other artists, and they're like, nah, man, it's, this is that's that was that was that was a time. It's it's different, and it's always going to be different. What's your opinion on that? I, don't, I see. It. Sometimes I ask them what is different to them, like mm -hmm. what or. If they could have something be reminiscent of what they like, like it's out there. All this stuff that they talking about that's not out there is out there. These, we all been making records for years. Rock Moss, <laughs> you know, Bobby Knuckles, Black Thought. These my man rapper Pooh had a project with Knots. All these dudes that have been making records even this year, Cypress Hill. Been making records for years, but it's just that a lot of the fans fell out of the hip hop, you know, world and, and love. Where like you know, I've had for years, dude, asking me like, yo, what, what happened to Showbiz and AG? I'm like, damn, AG just dropped a record like two weeks ago, or you know, they just lost. The people, I think I told you before, people told me they thought Camp Low retired when yeah, when they, 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 they record out with P Rock like, a couple of years. Like, when they had days. last year or a couple of years ago, they dropped like. Two solos each right. and a group album. And they're always something. on tour. Always rocking. And I know the promoter that takes them, so I know this. They're, they're all they're sure. always rocking out. So you know, I, I would say that uh, you know, we here, you know, it's, it's just up to the fans, you know. And I like the fact that this year they have that feeling because there's so many years where that does happen, you know. But then I would say that because now everybody has a phone in their hand and everybody can keep up with what's new. And as long as everybody on the same page, and, and because hip hop is so overcrowded, where everybody fighting against each other, you do tend to get, you know, the stuff that you need to hear, you know, like right. what's coming out this year. So that's dope. Anybody young that you rock with? Scott Zoo and Tor Ray. When I listen to them, I want to hear some Bower Brothers. When I listen to them, that's what I'm talking about. That's uh, growing up knowledgeable in the underground hip-hop where when you listen to them i hear myself as far as like and i know they're not that young yeah but no but, but they but they they're, younger than me yeah they're, it's a different it's a different generation you know, but that's what like, i that's what i gravitate towards when i when i hear when i imagine you know how hip-hop should be like with everybody <laughs> not just right. like you but like everybody right. <laughs> because that's how it was for us when we was coming out right you know what i'm saying we was in competition with every whatever you heard when you before you made a record that's what you were in your mind in competition with because you felt like i can do the same thing or better or i just want to contribute to the craft and say it at one time or another in my life i was able to contribute to hip-hop in some form of way whether you're a producer or a dj or, or mc or a writer or whatever you want to do so you know this is what this is where we at right now, and 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 I would hope to think that it's a lot of a lot of other dudes out there like that. You know I I I, I know I like to do my man um, Denmark Bessie. 
I like him too. Okay. He, he, you know, and he's from Detroit. You know, I, I like Elza. Elza is younger than me. I like Elza. I love Elza. Elza is nice. Big up to Elza. You know, yeah, there's a lot of out there, you know, younger than me that I listen to. But I also still listen to my favorite, so it's mine, and it's always going to be. You know, Smith and Wesson. All right, you look to you. I love these segues. Yeah, I love these segues, man. You, you, what you got? Did you write my notes for me, fam? So, all right, let's go there. I'm putting you on the spot. Top five, man. Your top five. Yeah, top five. Top five. I awesome. got mad different categories. All right, let's do the top categories. Got we got, categories. we got time. Five. I'm in Jersey. My let's normal, do it. My normal top five for me. Okay, how about this? I'll give you top top five, just pure spitters. All right, pure spitters. Right now. Like I said, my, my top five spitters growing up, in the, just a period, like what made me set with Kane, KRS, and this is no order, Kane, KRS, Rakim, Chuck D, and Chuck Rock. Kane, and I think that's, I think, Kane, K, yeah, I think so. Kane, KRS, Chuck D, Rakim, Rakim and, Chuck Rock. and Chuck Rock. Growing up for me. Now, if I had another category, I would say like special ed, EST from Three Times Dope. West Philly in the building. Hilltop Hustlers. EST was like way ahead of his time coming coming up in the game. Where like, you know, you listen to the Giddy Up and you listen to that first EP they had before the album came out. Of course. Styling my hair like the a new wave. Rhyming, the way he was rhyming. New even wave even afro. Even after they, even after, you know, like later on they could, that is like, you know, what I'm talking about where it's like, Philly. like Special Ed taught me how to flow. When certain songs, you know, and he was still popping shit, but it was the way he was saying it. It wasn't just straightforward. Right. And I, when I see him, I, I know he don't probably think about it. Because I don't try to too fanned out, but I did do that on Instagram one time. I just blacked out. Was like, rest for a second, then Jeff Freck inside. I'ma play the record raw. You listen to it. I'm like, dude. When I hear stuff like that, I'm like, how is he doing that? Where it's like, you know, even Buster. I heard Buster say things where I'm like. How is he saying that? Like, how is he, why did you think of that? Like, I tell Monster all the time, he's my favorite, my favorite MC. For certain reasons, you know what I'm saying? But this dude is incredible where it's like, why did you think of that? And it's also an MC make you think of that because you're like, why did I think of that? Like, right. you thought of that. I wish right. I would've thought of that. Right, yeah. So, you know, uh, who else, man? Special Ed, so it was heavy Even influence Even Poutine back in the day for me, when I listened to Critical Beat Daryl album, he was rhyming like Kane a little bit, but on his own way. Still, right. still, da, 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 but he was like, cool, keep saying it. Right, right. But then was able to change himself into another MC and be, uh, but you could tell out of Ultramanetic, he was the prime MC. Sir I Boo, I, I could go a whole deep down the Holy War record. I could go deep down, but like, you know, yeah. Those, those so my, those top five that you gave, that was from. Before is that is that now? So that's still now. That's still now. That's still so, now. So, so, hold up. Our names still make records. Kane. Still, still hold on. So we said hold on, because I'm a little Chuck D. Kane, Chuck D. Rakim. Rakim. Chuck Rock. And who else? Was, Kane, Chuck D. Chuck Kane. Oh yeah, Kane. Kane, Chuck. Rakim. Rakim. Chuck Rock and he made me forget that. Damn, I forgot too. Somebody tell us who he said. Shit, I don't remember. Oh well. Yeah, I see this is bad. Huh? Yeah, there's... Yeah. <laughs> Who did we say? Kane. Kane. We got to remember now, though. We have to. KRS. Okay. All right. So, but I don't know. Did we talk about where do you think it's going? Where's it going to... I mean, is it... Is it so, it, is there a resurgence? Or and is, is it going to... Here's... I think the thing is, yo, I think people want the feeling back of the 90s. Like, we, all, we, we just drove around a little bit in Newark today. We just drove around a little bit... And you said this project's knocked down, this project's not. Right, the right. shit is gone. It's twenty years different. Right. So how is it gonna be like that? You know. So I think a lot of people talk to me. They're like, "Yo, it'll never be like the the nineties." Of course, of course not. Right. It's so maybe I, I think that's where a lot of people are coming from. A lot of times when they. I mean, you gotta make it what it is for yourself. I mean, it's never gonna look like. You know, how you think I feel? I, at least I can walk around this neighborhood now. Like I tell you, blocks away from here, you couldn't walk down there. Down the street down here, Seventh Avenue, you couldn't go down there. At night, around there, like you know, so it's like now you make townhouses now, but Prince Street Project not too far from here. You, it's just like right here, townhouses, but you can walk. They have stores. It's reasons why it's like that. We can talk about it later on, but it's different now. So it's like you know, just like with hip hop, it'd be on a totally different wavelength from where we are today. But I think that 
from where we are today, I think it's more balanced today than it was a few years ago. Because like yeah. certain certain people you wasn't hearing. So I think because of Instagram, because of social media, a lot of people paying attention to Pop Duke's album. A lot of people paying attention to Bad Seed. Album. That album is crazy. Where Pop Duke's album is crazy. Bad Seed album is crazy too. You know what I mean? And it's like when you got all this stuff happening, you know, is it, social media is helping push push the you know level a little bit for us. So uh, I'm grateful because you know that's why I, it's a, you can't like it's a gift and a curse with social media when you come to doing your music. You know, you yep. have your page where you just do your music and you be personal because a lot of people try to figure out why shit don't work and it's got to be constant, constant on promotion of yourself every day. Constant in people face, constant every day what you doing. Constant every day where your next show is gonna be. How many shirts you got left? You know, you know I'm gonna go to your you gotta be it's, otherwise it's, they don't care. No, and, and, and the only you should be doing that. And there's no thing of doing too much. Cause if you're not calling somebody or somebody not calling you, telling you what you got going on later on today and you be your own manager and you do all that. Cause that's what I do. You know, I don't have money to afford to pay 20 and 15 percent for somebody to do work for me. So until that day happens, yeah, I got certain people that pull in certain strings and plugs here and there. Shout out to Vinny Kumar, you know, and this is things that we need to have in the background when you're doing what's in front of you. So everybody need help. True, true, definitely. All right, before we go, I told you I was gonna uh, ask you to spit something. I, I need to hear something. We need right. to we need to hear it. Whatever you got. We get it popping with the mask off the ball, pointing loose leaf. Highly informative like a news brief. Abuse beats and fuse my dues paid. School days, first nigga with the fade in my grade. Aid in the bob, my rules that you play to the side. While I convey with the message medicine to prescribe. Settle eyes with the most distinct, the skill of trade. Makes a lethal combination success and build a trade. Recognizable voice, did I adapt to any sequence? APT participant, I visit frequent. In the leisurely pace, my words filling the space, filling the gaps of the missing as I piss in the face. Made in a state of car chase, gun toting hooligans. MC other sins say team do it again. It's like this and like that. Coming soon, buck wild in the fucking artifacts. All right. Woo! Yo, I gotta say something. Up. Gotta ask you a question about this. Can I say thank you very much because I said, yo, I'm gonna ask you to spit, Work. okay? And then you spit, and then <laughs> and, and and I told you, and I actually told you before, uh -huh. but a lot of times, can can we please clear this up? Or maybe I'm wrong. Is it just me, or if you're an artist or an MC, should you or should you not be prepared for the person in uh, if it's a real hip hop interview right. to ask you to spit something? Yeah, you should have something in the back. Something. Something, because uh, you don't know where you could be at. I always tell my, my little cameras up, it's like, yo, you know who you gonna be in the room with? If they put you on the spot, always be ready. Always be ready, no matter where you at. Something. Just have something. Something, and I tell them, it, like, you gotta have it ready. Mm -hmm. Like, I just asked yesterday, all right, we're gonna have Elder Sensei spit, okay? Put the glass and spit. That is how you fucking do it, new, new cats, yo. You don't, yeah. I say yeah, man. Yes. When you go to Europe, you can't say no a lot out there either, so they take that person. Word. Thank you very much. Legendary Artifacts. Peace, y'all. All right. Thank you. Rap FM. Boom. All right.